when I got pregnant with Ivy, she was very, very wanted. And I wanted to be a stay-at-home mum. So I worked really hard, put away every single penny that I had, could so that financially I could afford to stay at home for a period of time. Um, so in the world of w w working women, being a stay at home mum is frowned upon, but also so is being a working mum frowned upon. It seems that there are two schools of thought and it doesn't matter where you go or what you do, you're going to meet both schools of thought and for some reason people feel that they can tell you exactly what they think of you. So as a stay at home mum, oh how can you afford to do that? You must be really rich. So there's all an incredible amount of Yay! judgment um, around making a decision to work or not to work and it, as far as I'm concerned it's horses for courses. <laughs> um, it's up to the individual, it's up to the family, you know, there isn't a right or a wrong but for some reason um, the pressure of, of having to answer to society norms is incredible. I felt guilty for choosing to stay at home and not earning money yeah. but I would have felt equally as guilty about going out and leaving you with another human being paying for them to look after my child, a child that I chose to have. So constantly there's this shifting battle um, between what your head and what your heart says yeah. and then what society or all the people that you come across say. And also when you're um, a first time mum, certainly in my case, I don't know if this happens to all mums, but you are quite sensitive, you, you feel quite vulnerable, your life has literally just been tipped upside down, so the pressure of that is incredible. It was definitely the right thing for me, and although mentally it was very difficult, I made the decision to do a degree, with, so I did my open university degree when I was looking after you, so in, at the times where you slept or you didn't need my attention, I went to work to get my degree. I yeah. saved a huge amount of money from the job I had before I had you, and then I eked that out, like, like I spent nothing, you know, we didn't have an extravagant life, we cut back on all the luxuries of life, we we made it work for us. Yeah, I remember growing up and like the way that we lived when I was younger was very different to how we live now. Um, so I'm not good at coping with stress. Mm. I get very angry and I don't find it easy to articulate. Even though I have a degree in English, <laughs> I still really struggle with articulating how I feel. And then because I think that I'm not being heard, I scream and shout One, and get really two, angry instead three, of keeping go. calm and trying to articulate myself better to be understood rather than assuming that someone's going to understand the words that I speak um, and I think that's a bad thing and the other thing that I think is really unhealthy is when I am stressed and angry my alternative to screaming and shouting is to put it in a box put the box in the cupboard of my mind and lock the door and then it just festers in there and it's never dealt with yeah. And that's not a good thing either. I think my coping methods are not good. And do you think there's different pressures for stay-at-home mums and stay-at-home dads? Or do you think it's a lot the same? I think it's worse for dads yeah. because of that stereotypical role, model, you know, men who come in, who go to work, hunt-gatherers, gatherers. Yeah. Um, we 
we had a man at the toddler group uh, he was the only man and that, that must have been sweet. really hard oh. for him. Do you ever regret being a stay-at-home mum? Never.